Oh. There he is. <laughs> I don't think she's drinking that. I don't think Jennifer, Jen Lopez, as I call her, um, I don't think Jen drinks or eats Dunkin' Donuts. You don't think she's having a 1,600-calorie <laughs> iced coffee in the morning? No, I think if you have that body at 50, she's on like a, a medical, there's like pipettes making her breakfast in yeah. the morning. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Please welcome to the stage a very smart lady, Dana Schwartz. Can I sit here? Hi, sit wherever you want. More clapping. It's my wife. More <laughs> clapping for my yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am his wife. Also, New York Times two-time number one best-selling author, host of the Noble Blood podcast, television yeah. writer. Yeah. Way too good for me. Smart in everything <laughs> except picking a lifelong mate. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, Dana, we're married and live in the same house. How's that going? Do you think? I think pretty good. I mean, both of us aren't super neat, which is good. Like, yeah. which is nice. We're sort of the equal levels of messiness. It's nice of you to include yourself in that. <laughs> I'm more type A, but I, I don't think I'm like obsessively neat, which I do think would be a, like, I, I like that you don't make a big deal when I leave things around and vice versa. You leave the counters very dirty yeah. and I will leave clothes and boxes <laughs> in every part of the house. Yeah, so it balances out. Can we, it's very nice of you yeah. to say it balances out. So if you had to grade me on someone to live with, like an A minus. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. I'd give you a C plus. You told the love it or leave it producers. You told the love it or leave it producers. You believe TikTok is ruining restaurant culture. Oh, yeah. And maybe even food entirely? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? I, I'm, I don't think TikTok is good for anyone's brain. Sure. Like if they ban TikTok, like I'll be happy, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I, well, you often find yourself in league with Republican uh, Yeah, we Congress have a lot people, in common. Right? We <laughs> mostly agree with things. I think that if you've ever gone on TikTok, you see people like posting like, I just found this restaurant. And they just try to find like things that are the most like outrageous, like a burger that's like six burgers tall yeah. and like covered in cheese. And it's not even good. The whole point of it is just to be more than whatever came before. Yeah. So we're in this like arms race of like new shapes for croissants that actually we don't need. <laughs> They they do have like cube croissants now. And no, you know what it is now? I don't know if anyone's seen this. It's like flat croissants that you fry in caramel. And I'm like, the whole point of croissants is that they're like, fl no, don't. <laughs> why why flatten a croissant? No, so, so so it gets juicier. I don't know. Like, do you never do you never just I'll, sometimes I'll flatten a croissant and eat it. like those Costco croissants that were just like dripping with whatever it was Costco was putting in those yeah. croissants. Well, that's that's what these TikToks are doing. They're or taking the Costco croissants, they're rolling them out, they're frying them in butter and sugar, and now you're gonna do that. You know what? I am gonna do it, <laughs> and I'm gonna leave the mess out for a week too. <laughs> Do you know where this mission got started? Where? I feel like in Bloody Marys. Oh, I was going to say Salt Bay. No, I think this, this predates Salt Bay. Yeah. Even predates Salt Bay, although he is definitely a perpetrator of this. You, like, a Bloody Mary used to just be, when I was a kid drinking Bloody Marys, uh, <laughs> it used to, you know, sometimes there'd be a piece of celery in it, right? Yeah. And then this Bloody Mary arms race started. You put the full hamburger. Now, yeah. They, they, first they started adding like there's a pepperoni stick and like, oh, that's cute. That's fun. I'm already devastating my sodium for the day, so why not add that? And then all of a sudden they started like olives too and then, yeah, and then it was like a cheeseburger <laughs> and then like an entire Chicago deep dish pizza. <laughs> so I've, I've actually never had a Bloody Mary because I don't like, I don't really like alcohol and if I'm going to have it, I want it to be like delicious and like sweet and I'm like, I don't like, to, it's like a savory tomato. Do you not like, it's like tomato soup. You could dip a grilled cheese sandwich in a Bloody Well, that Mary. sounds good. I would rather just dip a to grilled cheese in tomato soup. But that won't get you drunk. But you know what I like? <laughs> you know what I like more than this Bloody Mary arms race is the the milkshake with like the, the slice of cake right, on it. Right. I have ordered one of those and I have I have had one. You of ate those. the entire thing? No, I shared it, but oh, right. but I have ordered one of those. I've partaken in the culture. Like I took a picture and posted it. Of the giant, the uh, the milkshake wearing a Kentucky Derby lady <laughs> hat. <laughs> yeah. It's going to the royal wedding. So you think okay, so you think it's a good take. Yeah. Good take. C plus. In <laughs> in happier news for our household, Claire Saffitz is going back to her gourmet makes roots on YouTube. Oh, I know. What did, well, yeah, you sent this in. <laughs> not to break, not yeah. to break the illusion of show yeah. business, but um, you did, this, these were the yeah, questions yeah. you asked me to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> there are things I'm really excited about. Team me up for Claire Saffitz, <laughs> all right. What does Claire Saffitz mean to you and do I have to fight her? <laughs> I don't know if anyone followed the whole Bon Appetit saga, 
But the loss of the Bon Appetit test kitchen, which yeah. really did sort of keep me afloat during the pandemic, was personally devastating to me. And so the fact that Claire Saffitz is back recreating gourmet treats, it's like the the only like a sequel that I want. So actually. what is that? So d- when you say recreating gourmet treats, what do you mean? What is she so doing? So she's a pastry chef right. or just like a professional chef. And she's also not like super cheerful. She's not like a food network chef. She's like kind of mean in a really good way. Oh, she doesn't come up with like cute little nicknames no, for everything in the kitchen? she's not cute. I mean, she's, she's like, we're going to cut up some broccacini boom boom, you know, like that. None of that. Oh, okay. And she like gets visibly frustrated when things go wrong. Oh, perfect. In like a good way. Yeah. Um, and she takes like grocery store like ho-hos or whatever and like tries to make them at home in the most accurate recreation possible. Oh. Like gourmet versions of oh, it. Oh, Hell yeah. Yeah. Why hasn't that happened at our house? I am <laughs> I not made, I'm not asking. No. That feels very you know impressive. What? She loves baking. I didn't say You know what like, I've made for you on multiple occasions? What? Those grocery store cookies. Yo. I okay. on request. They are like a real challenge to make. I have to like pull out like a spice grinder to get like powdered. You have to buy like xanthan gum yeah, from the it's internet. Yeah, like really specific, and I've made those for you multiple times. Please reassure the audience that I didn't just yell at you to <laughs> bake me something and that you actually enjoy baking. <laughs> I do. If you can tell by my obsession with Claire Savage, I bake a lot. I feel like I was putting some real Ralph Cramden vibes out there for a second. <laughs> uh, Dana. Yeah. You've written two books that I am both contractually obligated and overjoyed to shout out. And these books are called... No. <laughs> Anatomy, a love story, and immortality, a love story. As someone who has written romance... Yeah. By the way, they're uh, out on paperback. Out in paperback. Get them wherever paperbacks are sold. Three weeks in a row on the indie bestseller list? They're indie bestsellers. Back on the list after two years. As someone who has written romance, tell me, what makes for a good love story? Oh, um, tension. A little bit of tension at the beginning and waiting just long. In a book. This is not in real life. Okay. In a book. Tension and then waiting just long enough that the reader really wants it to happen and and then... letting the characters come together. How long is too long to wait? I think it happens at like the 60% mark. 60% moment. mark? Yeah. No. Does that, that feels yeah. right. Yeah, the, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. 60%? Readers, I feel like 60% feels right. Yeah, like 90% of the way people are like, what the heck? What even? You have to, it, the formula is sort of 60% and then another obstacle and then they come back together. Yeah. People are agreeing. People have read romance books. They know. It would be very funny to write a romance book and then set up like you're like they're about to hook up and then just end the book right before it happens. <laughs> Has well, somebody done like a romance Blue Balls novel yet? I mean, they would make them by the sequel. They make them by the sequel? Yeah. As a quick follow-up, do you think we have a love affair for the ages? Yeah, of course. Even though we did like pretty much immediately start dating. Yeah. And then like, pretty immediately I moved in and we got married. You came on my podcast. Yeah. We talked about Shrek. You roasted me for liking it. And then b- bing, bang, boom, okay. we were married. I want to defend myself because the Shrek thing has gone very far. No, no, no. We'll move on. Great. <laughs> You can host this show next time, and I'll sit there, and then you can talk about Shrek. <laughs> Great, me too. Which is, <laughs> which is why we're going to play a game we're calling Love is Blind. Oh, that's fun. Look, yeah, there's a little logo. Oh, yeah, we got a little logo there. It looks so beautiful in that picture. Thank you, baby. Uh, I'm going to tell you about a beautiful love story, and then I'm going to ask you to rank it against our relationship. Oh, okay. Which, again, started with Shrek. <laughs> in terms of passion. Is this a more passionate love affair than ours or not? Does this game make sense? Yeah. And it makes sense to you? All right. Well, love doesn't make sense, baby. So let's play Millie Bobby Brown and Jake Bon Jovi. (laughs) Oh, no. I feel like the answer has to be no because I know they're adults, but they're just children in my head. Boy, that dude looks like he, a lot like Bon Jovi. (laughs) It looks like he felt like the mother wasn't involved at all. Like he (laughs) fell off of Bon Jovi at some point. (laughs) He re- reproduced via budding. In like twenty in two thousand one, he <laughs> fell off of Bon Jovi while he was on a jog in really tight shorts, and I just started <laughs> following him. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say less passionate because unfortunately, I still think of her. I know that this is on me, and it's not right because she's an adult woman, but I still think of her as a, a child. Well, she's twenty. You know, that's pretty young. Yeah, twenty's pretty young. That's like that's also people young. got married at that age in the forties, yeah. but like any more, yeah, that seems insane. Give a minute, Bobby Brown. Uh, he's the son of Bon Jovi. Uh, her Stranger John Things. John Bon Jovi? John, of, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Vincente Bon Jovi. He's a, he's a harpist. Uh, her Stranger Things dad was the officiant. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's kind of cute, yeah, right? I like that. But you still think ours is a, is a better love story than Millie Bobby Brown and Jake Bon Jovi? Yeah. 
Jake Bon Jovi. It's, I'm sorry. It sounds like a fake name, yeah. right? Is our relationship better than Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump? <laughs> more passionate. Is our relationship more passionate? They're back together. Honestly, I think no, because they have sort of like a, this kinky thing happening. Yeah. There's like a humiliation fetish happening. It's the breaking up, getting back together. Like there's a, we're a pretty simple, straightforward love story. Again, like met, got together, got married, moved in, you know, live in a house. This is like some like psychodrama happening. Yeah. No, this is more passionate. Also, we've never been to Fort Lauderdale together. And yeah, those that's... two are always in Fort Lauderdale. What's happening down there? In Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. <laughs> she can't afford it. <laughs> Can you? Oh, yeah. we... Oh, yeah. we have the same bank account. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we don't. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Trump has called Ron DeSantis de sanctimonious, tiny D, shut down Ron, and although he publicly denied it, reportedly, meatball Ron. That's the cutest. You have almost no nicknames for me. He no. has like four nicknames for I'll him? start calling you Meatball Ron. <laughs> yeah. Say no more. Is our love affair more passionate than Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez? Um, I'm going to say yes, just because Ben Affleck's face always looks so deeply unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, it doesn't look like there's passion and it doesn't look like there's life in there. It looks like an, a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee is the only thing keeping him going in the morning. Yeah. Well, who among us? Uh, their marriage is reportedly on the rocks. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Entertainment Weekly is reporting on Wednesday that Ben feels like Jen has a hard time feeling satisfied, and that's one of the issues they're facing. I find it hard to believe that Jennifer Lopez is a difficult woman to please. <laughs> I think she's an easygoing. She just, everything about her seems easygoing. If we've learned anything this year, it's to not talk trash about Jennifer Lopez <laughs> on, on a podcasts. podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not a performer. I'll never be on this now. Weird to co- huh? That's okay. Weird to call Jennifer Lopez Jen. Jen? Did Jen I Lopez. say Jen? No, they do. Oh yeah. yeah. Things to consider. The only thing dreamier than getting swept away on a wave of nostalgia is a man who will carry fresh Duncan to your door every morning. Oh, that is sweet. That is sweet. Mm -hmm. oh. There he is. <laughs> I don't think she's drinking that. I don't think Jennifer Jen Lopez, as I call her. Um I don't think Jen drinks or eats Dunkin' Donuts. You don't think she's having a 1,600 calorie <laughs> iced coffee in the morning? No, I think if you have that body at 50, she's on like a, a medical, there's like pipettes making her breakfast in yeah. the morning. <laughs> and like, good for her, she looks amazing. We saw her in Hustlers pole dance. Like, God be with her in everything she's doing. I just, that's just for him. She's phenomenal. Yeah. She's a phenom. Do you think our relationship is more, so we're more, we're better off than yeah. Ben and Jen? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. What about, are we better off than Ben and Dunkin' Donuts? Are we more passionate? <laughs> no. That's the most no, passionate relationship the, And it's also Earth. longer. We've been together, like, coming up on four years. Yeah. That, that is a long-term relationship. I feel like he had that before he had his mother's milk. Yeah. Are we more or less passionate than Shrek and Fiona from the Shrek franchise? <laughs> um, probably less, but I don't want to get involved in Oscar whatever winning motion doing. picture. Anyone should rewatch it as an adult and just like it was fine. It was good for the time. It just doesn't hold up is all I'm saying. Classically spawned four sequels. Yeah, go watch those sequels. They're wonderful. And now the Puss in Boots movies as well. I've actually heard that. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that the last Puss in Boots movie was really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had uh, people it, say it was nominated for an Oscar. It, it, it was nominated. <laughs> it didn't win an Oscar. You know what did? <laughs> Shrek. Yeah, but that was one before before people actually took animation Oscar seriously. No, it wasn't before. It was the first time they did it. Yeah, so it's like they didn't know what to do. They just like threw whatever. They're like, oh, a movie came out this year. It's nominated. Okay. All right, girl. I'm sorry. It's not Ponyo or whatever. Ponyo's really good. I know Ponyo's good, but so is Shrek. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry you guys have to watch us fight like this. <laughs> Is so uh, is our relationship more or less passionate than Shrek and Fiona? I think less because you've never like rescued me in a position of peril. You've never been in peril. That's true. Yeah. And maybe then then we could test that. But until then, I've picked you up from LAX. So actually, I think you're ah, wrong about that. You're right. I resent. That's true. <laughs> it's just as bad as the dragon. I, honestly, yeah. yeah. If that dragon was in Burbank, I'd take the dragon. <laughs> Is our relationship more or less passionate than Missouri and married women? Oh, oh, this one just makes me sad. You said that you wanted to talk about this. Not in this con. This is a very jokey context. Yeah. 
Well, you can get serious for a second. I will get serious and say, everyone, please go vote to protect women and their basic human dignity. Because <laughs> the reason we have this in here is because in Missouri, it is currently illegal for a pregnant woman to obtain a divorce before they give birth, which yeah, is insane. It's insane. Yeah. They just won't grant a divorce until they give birth. And it's like, oh, because you're if you're pregnant, you're not actually a person anymore. You're now this like vessel that we're, you know, funneling into your Christian heteronormative marriage. I just hate it. It really makes me sad. It makes me genuine. Like, I don't have like a jokey thing, but it makes me like genuinely nervous for the state of our country, the yeah. way that our cultural views on women are still are still here. Like, yeah. this is still in law. And it's like people pretend because these little liberal enclaves are happening. But no, like throughout the country, this is still how people view women. And it's, it's really sad and really scary. Very sad and very scary. Yeah. And now for a massive change of yeah, pace. Is our relationship more or less passionate than me and the video game I'm currently playing, Baldur's Gate 3? <laughs> You've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3. I just got it. How late did you go to bed last night? Well, I go to bed really early. Tw I went to bed at 12.30. Well, that's late for me. Yeah, yeah, that's that seems, late for you. I guess, reasonable. This is what I'm curious about. This, I, As soon as you got it, I was like, this is the video game you can have sex in. And you're like, no, it's not. And then you were making your character, and you could like choose the penis of your character. Yeah. And I was like, I think this is the sex game. I turned out to be wrong. It is the game you can have sex in. Have, has your character had sex yet? My you character have to be has honest. not had sex yet. Are you being honest? I'm being 100% honest. Well, then My us, character but... was turned down last night. Oh, I'm so sorry. I defeated this big fort full of goblins, and I was like, all right, now's the time, right? And yeah. then, nope. Oh. Friend zoned. <laughs> Friend zoned by a half elf. So then the, the answer, Ian Carmel story. The answer is us. Yeah, but not for long. Is. Maybe, maybe defeat more elves or goblins. We'll or see what happens. Yeah. You can't. There's like three penis options, three vulva options. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Are we more or less passionate than RFK Jr. and <laughs> Confederate statues? <laughs> Um, the presidential I, hopeful said on right wing nut job Tim Pool's podcast this week, I have a visceral reaction against <laughs> against the attacks on those statues. They were heroes in the Confederacy who didn't have slaves. And, you know, I just I just have a visceral reaction against destroying history. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, they didn't have slaves. S some of them. <laughs> Couple of them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think um, we're more passionate, but less passionate than um, RFK and the worm that I still believe is in his brain. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I think we are. Yeah. yeah. More passionate than him in statues, less than him in the brain worm. Yeah. And finally, are we more or less passionate than Ian and Dana? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's us at prom. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> Things to consider. I love you and thank you for playing oh, this game with you, me. Thank you, baby. This is great. Thank you, Dana. Check out Anatomy, Immortality, and all her other books. Yeah.